Greetings, Earthlings. What you see here is an HP 3476A multimeter. These were uh, originally released in 1976 by Hewlett Packard. And the last thing I need probably is another multimeter, but I got this. And so we're gonna, just going to have a look at it and play with it and see if it even works. Um... Uh, <laughs> So, as I said, uh, released originally in 1976, they called it a three and a half digit meter. Um, it's really about, it's really more a three digit meter, uh, 1100 counts. So a proper three and a half digit meter would go to 1999. Uh, and this only goes to 1100. 0.3% um, basic accuracy. Nothing to, nothing to write home about. Um, in maybe in 1976, that was pretty good. Uh, actually, at the price, it probably was. This was a released um, price of two hundred and twenty-five dollars in uh, in 1976, 77. Uh, by comparison, you can look at the HP 35 calculator which was released in 1972, and that was priced at $395. So for HP, this is a pretty uh, budget uh, instrument. Uh, and I know a calculator is not a multimeter, but um, you know what I mean. Uh, HP, HP stuff was never cheap. <laughs> um, but this apparently was built to a price point uh, it can, it, the, the inputs are here on the side. You, you see this sort of, people call this like a tricorder <laughs> look or something inspired perhaps by, by Star Trek. Um, there's an LED display here, uh, and, uh, the buttons. And on the side are the inputs. And now here's something, um, so this is printed on and you can see it's worn off through the years if we talk about the hp 35 the reason one of the reasons i brought that up as a as a comparison hp made a big deal about how the the buttons the the numbers were like molded through on the hp 35 so they would never wear off here they just printed the lettering on or the the uh the labeling and uh, as you see it did wear off so built to a price point as I say nothing there there's your power input 100 and, uh, 104 to 127 volts this was built for the US market so um, let's power it on and see if it works okay so I don't have proper probes for it um, you can see those are, those take regular banana plugs, not the shielded kind that you'll use on a, a fluke or anything else. But I do have, I do have these, uh, banana plugs to, to, to clip. So we'll use those initially. And the first thing let's try to do is just measure, we'll power it on. First of all, we'll power it on and see if there's any life in it. We're going to measure voltage. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll get to that. First thing I think is we'll try measuring a resistor. I have a, a 1K ohm resistor here. Uh, but we'll let's see what happens. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Because uh, there's nothing connected right now and it's reading like zero. Uh, okay, so it has life. I mean, we can see that, right? The display, the display is active. It's reading like zero ohms. You can see it just as well that way. Um, zero ohms, but if I disconnect, uh, it should say give an overload indication, and it doesn't. So that's an issue. Let me put the resistor in there. And it's not changing. Okay. That may be because I have it on volts. Huh? What do you think? 
<laughs> Let's try K Holmes. There we go. Okay, now this is even weirder. Um, with nothing connected, it's bouncing around all over the place. All over the place. Zero. Okay. That's not bad. But that's really, that's just all over the place. Okay, let's try the 1K. <laughs> Zero. Yes, that's... <laughs> that's interesting. Okay. Um, what does that mean? I'm not sure. It means it's not ringing. It gets an occasional overload indication there, okay? There's your overload indication. Actually, right there. And I could... could Pick up the wires, though. So, is that picking up, like, just noise? There. Infinite. Okay. I like that. 1K. <laughs> is zero. Okay. Well, that's real good. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and try voltage. And I can just piggyback these, which is kind of neat. So those are disconnected. Those are just hanging there. Okay. Uh, and we'll fire up the fluke here. And, uh, let's give it one volt. It's on the 10 volt scale, one volt. <laughs> or not. <laughs> okay. Point oh two. That's well. Okay. So there's a problem. Which means we will have to open it up. Current. I don't have a uh I don't have a current source. I looked for my current source. I do have a current source. I looked for it. I can't find it. I moved in here, what, it's like four months ago now, and uh, uh, cannot find uh, anything. I haven't finished unpacking. But this should supply, well, the current limiting is set way down, should supply, you know, 10, 20 milliamps maximum so let us try to th put a little current into it and see if it uh and actually i can show what how much current well it's not reading any current um i don't know what the what the resistance of this is on the current scale go to 100 volts there's 10, let's see, and I want to measure, I'm measuring current, 10, 20, 30. It's not taking any current at all. Uh, okay, so that tells us something. Now one thing about this is the inputs are fused. So HP made a big deal in their advertising of this thing. Wait, what's this? Oops, let's bring it down here. Okay, 3476AB. B, B, by the way, is a uh, battery-powered version. Um, AB has fuse-protected inputs. Volt ohm fuse, 32 milliamp, may need to be replaced if 3476 shows no response to voltage inputs. Well, that's true. Uh, with display of approximately zero and no response to ohm inputs with display of random numbers. Well, we did see random numbers. Slide inputs covered to expose fuses. Examine them and replace if necessary. Okay. As I was saying before I so rudely interrupted myself by reading that label... <laughs> It it uh, it has fuses on on both the inputs and HP kind of made a big deal about that. Um, so maybe for 1973, 
uh, that was a novel concept that you have protected inputs. To get at the fuses, we slide this cover. Oh, there they are. Okay. And that's, a, I guess, a 32 milliamp, and that's a 1.5 amp. And we'll take a look at them. Well, here's the 1.5 amp, and I can see right now that that's blown. Focus. Focus. Yeah, it's too close. Anyway, that one's blown. Okay, so that tells us something. And the 32 milliamp, well, it may well be blown as well. Um, yeah, kind of looks like it's blown. Okay. Okay, so I looked. I don't have any uh let's see that the, the this one's 1.5 amps this one's 32 milliamps i don't have anything like that i have a uh one amp slow blower a couple of them so i'm gonna <clears throat> just use that as a placeholder for now and we'll just be careful not to overload it let's go um first here in the current because these are uh, 3AG fuses, by the way. Um, quarter inch diameter by one and a quarter length. Put that in there. Um, hook it down. Okay. So that's on um, current. And there's no fuse in volts and ohms, which is fine. But we're going to give it some current from this thing, a few milliamps, and see what it does. Uh, again, our meter here is reading uh, current. And, uh, oh, and that's on. Huh. Okay. And we're at zero. Give it one volt. Crank it up. 10 volts, still seeing nothing, still seeing nothing, okay, um, maximum, current allowed, 10 volts, 20 volts, Oh, I'm sorry. This wire, which comes from here, needs to go into that. Not, not the test lead that's not connected to anything. Okay. Uh, let's give it 10 volts. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, um, about 32 milliamps. Uh, 0.0319. So, that's... Yeah, and 30. Um... Current limiting is on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that appears to be working. Um, let me go back to 10 volt scale. Uh, and we'll keep the current limiting. There you go. That's about a milliamp, it looks like. It says negative one. Okay. About two, two and a half milliamps. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'll power off. We're going to go switch over to voltage. I am going to move that fuse. Over here. <laughs> And I'm just going to be careful not to give it, uh, you know, just to make sure I don't give it any more than 32 milliamps. But I have the current limiting set on this, so. All right, that goes there. This will go here. Uh, just it's, it's zero. Uh, plugged in, powered on, on volts. Okay, zero. This should be one volt, 
one volt, spot on. Dang. Two. So you see, one, 1 1.1, 1. it switched over. So it, it really is not, you cannot call it a, uh, a uh, three and a half digit multimeter, really. Um, see there it switched, that's where it switched over. Now you switch back, switch back. Needs a 1.09, it'll switch. Yeah. It's pretty close. I mean, I mean, it's basically, I'm going to say it's basically working. Uh, okay. But, uh, but for the fuses. Okay, so I'm going to switch this off. Uh, now, let's bring back the, and here I do want to use this, this lead. Let's bring back our 1K resistor. And it's showing overload. Okay, not random numbers. Well, yeah. What if I connect the leads together now? I should get pretty close to zero. Yeah. Okay. Here's a 1K resistor. 0.998. That's pretty darn close. Okay. So. It needs to be calibrated. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty close, but it needs calibration and it needs fuses. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this dang 32 milliamp fuse, they don't you can't get those anymore. So, this is going to have to be part 1. Uh, and we'll have to do a, a follow-up video seeing uh, how to uh, how to resolve that issue. There's a couple of couple of things you, I could do. They do make. Um, I mean, I looked. I I, uh, I looked and for 32 milliamps in this size, and they just don't make them anymore. So it might be possible to find one somewhere, but um, I suspect it's fairly easy to blow that fuse. Uh, that fuse would blow if, for instance, you left it on the KOM setting and try to measure a voltage, um, forgetting it was on that setting, which we do all the time. You saw I did it earlier, only it was in reverse. I, I was trying to measure resistance on, when it was on the volt setting. Uh, so I... I want a solution <laughs> that is uh, sustainable, not just like one one fuse. And if I blow that, then I've got to track down another one because I'll probably blow it at some point. Um, so one option would be just to ignore it, uh, bypass it, stick a higher value fuse in there. Uh, another option, they do make 32 milliamp fuses in a smaller size. 5 by 20 millimeters. Um, so perhaps that was some sort of adapter. Another option might be um, going with a more modern approach in a, uh, a PTC device, which is sort of a, uh, a thermal self-resetting fuse, because I think you can get those in about 32 milliamp uh, at least you know in that range, um, but I think they're kind of slow acting. So my first thought is to try to adapt those mini fuses, but uh, as I said, that will have to be another episode.